I want to ask you about, um, you know, in baseball, the manager and the coaching staff, they'll schedule out the starting pitching rotation a week and a half. But it's very predictable. They know who they have. They know who they're facing. Curious how you and the Sharks coaching staff do it in figuring out what goalie's going to go against a given opponent on a given night. How far ahead are you generally in knowing that? Well, I think there's a there's a complicated answer to that. When we when we get the the uh, uh, season schedule, we sit down and map out a, a real general plan okay. to make sure that you know we want Jonesy to get 55 starts and and Deller to get 25 or, or that that area. Um, but then you know, like all best laid plans, you know things you, change. Yeah, yeah, things change, yeah. and you deal with injuries, and guys get hot, guys get cold. Right. Sometimes it's gut feeling, you know, you put a guy in and he plays really well. Um, unlike pitching, um, these guys have the ability to go back to back and, and, right. and not lose anything. Right. And sometimes they're better uh, when they can get in a groove and get right. rolling back to back. So, you know, we, we throw all that stuff in the blender. Um, we have the luxury of two starting goalies. And, uh, you know, I think uh, – it's just the way it works with us is it's that's almost a daily discussion on who's going to go next you know your team has been labeled at times a bit inconsistent this season i think you even talked about that in, in post-game situations as well but taking a look across the division almost all the good teams calgary included uh, anaheim in, in trail of you guys has has very much had wide swings of good and bad Almost every team in the division has seen both sides of it already this season. Do you think there's something to that widespread? Uh, you know what? I, I think I think the league has gone in the last three years uh, to really pushing offense, mm -hmm. especially from defensemen. I think that's all you hear about. And when you're doing that, when your defensemen are up the ice, they're, they're you know you're always opening things up more and. You got more grade A chances. The, right. the game's more wide open. Riskier is that? Riskier yeah. for sure. Uh, you know, and, and I think I think uh, when you have that, I think you see, you know, more leads being lost. More, right, uh, right. Uh, you know, it's not the typical 2-1 game. I also believe, though, that playoff hockey is playoff hockey. And, and uh, as this season goes on and you get into the playoffs, all that stuff tightens up. I want to talk about your captain, Joe Pavelski, on an incredible goal pace. Um, and a lot of people will look back at his last season, which I don't think is fair. You know he had a broken yeah. bone in his hand. You also had him going from a, a winger to a centerman when Joe Thornton was injured. So a lot of adversity he went through last season. But as for this season, as for his age, am I wrong to think that age is not going to be a factor as he gets older in this league? Because most of his game, it's not based around speed or size. It's hand-eye coordination and that, that hockey sense. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. Uh, I think age catches up to everybody eventually. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, he's not at a point where he's slowing down. Uh, he might be getting better. It's the best hockey maybe he's played uh, in my time here in yeah. the last four years, the first three months. Uh, he's healthy. He feels good. Uh, and I don't see him slowing down for at least a few more years. So he's, he's, got, he's got some tread still left on his tires <laughs> for sure. And uh, he's playing at an unbelievable level for us. Uh, you know, the leadership he provides behind the scenes is invaluable. And, uh, you know, you just, as a coach, you appreciate a guy like that every day because he stands for all the right things. Two more things for you. Number one being the youngest group of Sharks, uh, the least experienced in the National League. Thinking about Timo Meyer, Marcus Sorensen, Shimek, Radil, players of that ilk. What's most important for them besides getting the repetition and trying to gain some consistency and an identity? What's what's the most important thing at, at their stage of the career? And how do you guys as coaches help them with that? Yeah. Well, the most important thing for, for us is is that for them to recognize their value on a nightly basis to our game. You know, we're, we're not a team with a, a, a first line like Land, Landis Cog, Rantman, right. and McKinnon. You know that that's going to play. Top heavy, you're saying? Yeah, that's going to play 30 minutes and yeah. carry a game. We've got to be a four-line team uh, where we get contributions from all four lines on a nightly basis. So that they hop over the boards and we can attack in waves. So, if you're in the lineup for us, there's an expectation that you're going to have a positive impact on the game. And I think with young guys coming in, I think Timo Meyer is a good example of that. I think he's growing into that, and, and obviously is an elite player now, but. Even even the Redeals and CMAX have to realize, you know, their importance to, to what we're doing every night. And 
Uh, I think I think they do recognize that, but that's always tough for a young player, you know, to, to see how important his eight or ten or twelve minutes of right. ice is every night right. for us. As part of, of hosting a post game show, we get to hear your comments on a nightly basis after the contest and there have been times where I'm thinking I hear a question and I see your face and I'm like, I think he's finally gonna pop on this. Is that one. obvious? Well, I just I, I'm reading body language, right? Do you have a moment before you go out and talk to the media and face the cameras? Do you have a moment of looking yourself in the mirror and just going <laughs> and then you and then you proceed because I, I should imagine, I should is I that advice is that advice well, you're giving no, me? No, I think probably... you do that. I mean, you you're just so composed in the moment where uh, I'm like, uh, I, I, human wise, I don't know if he can handle this or much yeah. more of this right now. You know what? It, it's uh, it's probably the toughest thing I do to be honest with you. Um, the emotions of a game are, are so high, and you're you're stepping out of <laughs> out of right off the bench right into that. You're hot still, and. Yeah. Uh, it, it is probably the toughest thing that I've done, and, and it's hard not to uh, let those emotions uh, show, you know. And, <laughs> and you have to be careful. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I, I purposely, 90% of the time, don't address our team after a game right. because of that. Right. I, you know, you, you have an emotional reaction to what's gone on, either positive or negative. And I've learned over the years, a lot of times, you know, you're wrong or you have a better perspective when you sit back and take a deep breath and look at it. So... Unfortunately, you know, we don't get that luxury with the post-game right. stuff, and uh, a lot of times it's, uh, you know, it's it either you know doesn't come across the right way or right. or uh, you regret it maybe after yeah or or you see the the frustration uh, you know is evident, but uh, that's something that we have to deal with. I think you've been fine free here in <laughs> this season and all your Sharks yeah, tenure as well, the head coach. Let's, so let's keep it that way. <laughs> Pete Tabor, appreciate this. Thank Thanks, you, Brody. All right.